Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be putting together this baby girl quilt for my new granddaughter who is due in October. I really enjoyed putting this together. It took me a little bit longer due to some other circumstances, but it is completed and ready to be delivered. If you want to see how I put this together, keep watching and let's get to sewing. All right, so here I have all the fabrics that I want to use in my quilt. I don't know if I'll get to use all of them, but I would like to. So I've chosen eight different fabrics, and I pretty much only need like a quarter yard of each to make a small little quilt, but I decided to get a yard just in case I would need more or if I mess something up. So here I've got beautiful pinks and some peaches and some greens, and they all coordinate in some way. Now, if you didn't know, if when you buy a fabric, and this is the first fabric that I happen to cho choose, if you look on the edge, the fabric edge, that's kind of, you know, really nice, not the one where they cut, but these nice edges, some fabrics will have these little dots or little squares, and those will be all the colors that are found in the fabric. And then if you, if you wanna choose your main fabric, which I basically chose this one, you would look to see if it has that rather than taking it around and seeing okay does this match does this match does this match all you can do is just look at the little dots on there and then that's how you can choose the colors that are in here and match it up if that's what you want to do now i think mine match pretty good <laughs> i've got some pinks here i got a like a darker pink and a bit of a lighter pink. So that's why I've gone ahead and I've chosen these. This one's got a little bit of a lighter pink in it. I've got the kind of a minty or sagey light green over here. And then I've got a darker green over here. This is more like a Christmassy uh, a green. And then it's got a dark charcoal gray, or maybe you want to call that a black. So any of these fabrics, because they all have those tones, this one has the kind of a light sage and it has a little bit of this light green in it. This one's got pretty much like all three of those greens in it and a little bit of this grayish blue. Got the peaches here, which are also found here. Another uh, peach over here, which is kind of salmony, and I feel like this number here, number six and number nine, I kind of have that tones to it. So they all match. The only thing a little bit different is the green on on this fabric. This one's a more of a kind of an avocado green in there, but it's got the pinks and that matches and it's all fair in this game. <laughs> and of course, the white that you find in all of them, some of them have a, uh, kind of a bright white, some of them are a little bit more creamier white, and that's okay, they all match perfectly fine. But because of the bright white, I have chosen the back, which will be for my quilt. And I've chosen this type of a, sort of a faux fur. It's super soft. I love it. So that'll be the other side of my quilt. And I've got a yard of that. Maybe I might have a little bit more because I did buy another fabric and I, I purchased a yard of that. It is a white flannel. This is what I had originally purchased for the backing but I happen to have this soft fabric and I said you know what I'm going to use that for the back hey if it doesn't work out I always have this one and uh, if I don't use this flannel one I could use it for some burpee cloths so all right you guys this is what I've got to start the blocks for my little baby quilt I've also purchased some quilt batting this is a poly uh, type of uh, fabric uh, that goes between your blankets or quilts to make them cushiony. Um, this is ideal for comforters and tied quilts. So that's what I'm, and it's just tied because you can use uh, uh, little pieces of yarn to sew between, you know, your in your blanket and then tie it so that the batting on the inside doesn't move around, but you can also stitch it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using some um, yarn to do that. So I'll need to get some of that, which I don't have available, but I will get that soon enough. I thought about getting cotton batting for the middle of my quilt or for the center of my quilt, but um, I already have this and this is a queen size that I purchased some time ago. I used, I bought it queen size so that I would have enough to cut for little, you know, little quilts. So I'm going to go ahead and use that rather than going off and spending some more money and doing that all i need to do is get some yarn and i know i have a collection of yarn somewhere if not i will get something pink or 
uh, peachy, but I also I do have some white that I could use. Okay, so those are the materials that I'm going to be using, and then of course I'll need some uh, threading, and I'm just going to use some white thread to do all of my stitching on my little baby quilt. So you guys, are we ready? Let's see where I'm going to get that pattern and let's get to crafting. All right, so first I wanted to show you, I pulled out these books that I happen to have. This is a collection of quilting uh, books. They have beautiful blankets inside or little quilts inside and they have the patterns and the instructions on how to create each little quilt. Now I've gone uh, through some of these and uh, I want to go through my trusted quilt block that I always do but I wanted to change it up a little bit and I did find something and I've already gone ahead and I pulled out the book and let me show you what I'm going to do. Alright so I have this book it's called Quick Quilts from the Heart that I've gone ahead and I've pulled out all these books that I have. Uh, were a gift from my mom. She purchased them from one uh, lady that d did a lot of quilting and she happened to have all these books and my mom said, let me have them all. They're going to be for my daughter. <laughs> so that's why I have all of these books. And I do reference them and I get ideas from there. Okay, so I've found this particular uh, block right here. Here it is broken down so that you can see and well, you know, so we can all see what the pattern will actually look like. And it tells you on here, it's got all the instructions and what size to cut everything. I have an idea of how I want to cut this. Uh, I originally uh, wanted to do uh, a, a, a pinwheel block that I always do, but then I found the star block and I think I like that, but I'm going to simplify it a little bit more because I'm going to use the idea of how to make my pinwheel ones to create these particular blocks. Rather than doing this one here or this center one here, I'm going to cut this in half. So I'm going to show you on a little piece of paper that I drew out what I'm going to do. Okay, so on a piece of paper I have drawn out the same uh, design of star block that I want. And I want to do several of these. How many? I don't know yet. But I've gone ahead and I want to create this part right here. In the book, this one right here is not cut in half. I'm cutting it in half. So I'm making that little block and then that little block. And then, of course, these others here. All together, those are eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, they're halves of one fabric and half of another fabric. Let me show you in the book a little bit clearer right here. We are going to pretend there is an imaginary line right here in the middle of all of these. Okay, well, I'll just draw a light one with my pencil. That's okay. These are my books. I can mark them. Okay, so we have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, each of these are half, so I need to cut one, two, three, four of one color fabric, and then one, two, three, and four of another color fabric. And I'm going to do four and a half by four and a half inch squares first out of two fabric. Okay, so on here I have written what I'm going to cut, fabric one, fabric two, four at four and a half by four and a half inches, and then fabric two, four of four and a half by four and a half inches. And that's just to take care of these eight right here. I will later then cut these little corner squares but first I'm going to put these together so that I know what size these have to be and then I'll cut this one in the middle once I have all of these put together so that I can see what size I have to cut that. And I'm going by my measurements because that's what I'm most familiar with and I don't want it to be too big you know, of a block and I, cause that way I can have maybe four, five, six, eight. I don't know how many I'm going to need in, at the end to put together my quilt. But I'm going to be creating this as I go along. So let's cut these first according to my little instructions. All right, so I have these fabrics and I've decided that I want my center, my, the big square, cut out from this fabric because this is the main fabric that I had chosen for the baby quilt. And I think I want this one for the little four corners. So then I'm gonna use this to create uh, those uh, eight blocks. They're gonna end up being eight little blocks at the end. So I need four and four of each at four and a half by four and a half inches. All right, so I've already told you about those four other fabrics. Now these are the four fabrics. I'm going to create the same exact block and I'm going to use this one as my main center square, the big one. And then I'm going to use this one for the eight little blocks that I need to do. And then I'm going to use this one for the four corner blocks that I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all my fabric so I don't forget what I'm going to do where. And then I'm going to square them off so that I can go ahead and cut 
all of my little squares. So again, I'll start with these two to make my little blocks and these two. All right, so here I have my half a yard of fabric and this is the fabric edge and these are the raw edges. This is where it's measured and then it's cut. So these are the cut edges right here, the raw edges and the fabric edges. The fabric edges are already straight so what you want to do is you basically want to iron your fabrics and then you want to obviously fold them in half and get your two fabric edges nice up against each other because we want to trim those off. We're not going to use that. So because I wanted to save myself a little trouble of, of long trimming, I'm going to fold it in half here and I want to make sure that these edges are all aligned as well, all nice and straight. And once I have it all nice and straight, I'm gonna take the fold and put it along any one of my lines on my grid. So you need something like this in order to cut things straight, okay? And of course, I'm not a professional quilter, so these are not professional, um, professionally made, so we're just gonna keep that in mind. Okay, so now I want to align where I want to trim this keeping this always aligned along here. I want to align right above this fabric edge. So I want to cut all that off. So I'm just going to move it and make sure it's all aligned right here. I think that'll be a good place to cut off. So I'm going to use this line right here to trim. Okay, and to do that, I am going to use this clear uh, straight edge quilting ruler so that I can align along this white line over here and here so that I know that everything is nice and straight. Holding it down, pressing hard, and then of course I'm going to use a rotary cutter to do all that cutting, okay? So once I trim that off, now I have a nice square edge right here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and a half because I want to make my, my blocks four and a half by four and a half. And then I'll cut again so I can have that little strip already cut. Okay, I'm going to fold this one and we can cut from more as we need it. So now I'm going to take this and these are all raw edges over here. I'm now going to turn it and align this and this on some corners here to make sure it's all nice and straight. And now I wanted to cut this. That'll square it off. Okay, so my ca my camera cut off somewhere. So all I did was uh, I aligned this in the folded edge on a line here, and then I moved it over, and keeping this one aligned always and my fabric always together, and then finding where the a line of white line goes through here where I want to cut it, and I had already found a spot. So I'll just move this over just a little bit because I had decided, okay, right here is where I want to cut that little edge off. And then I just put my uh, straight edge and then just cut along and just trim that off. So I ended up with this nice squared off piece of fabric. I know it's a rectangle, but it's squared off as far as the corners are concerned, everything's concerned. So now I have these two pieces right here. And I know this is four and a half inches wide. So now I need to cut four and a half inches this way and see how many squares I can get out of that. For now, I need four. So I'm just gonna align this right here, a little edge here. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And then I have to go half. So let's put this right at the half mark and cut that off. So I need four of these and then I need four of the contrasting fabric and then for my other block I need four of each of these contrasting fabrics to create those little eight blocks okay so I'm just gonna get ahead of myself and I shall return okay so now that I've cut all my little blocks I've cut four and four and then I've done the same thing with the other bundle of fabrics the four and the four for the eight blocks I'm gonna take one of each and I'm gonna put them with their right sides these are the wrong sides, the wrong sides. I'm gonna put the right sides together like that. Take my straight edge and then from one corner to another corner, 
opposite corners, I'm going to draw a line with this uh, air erase pencil. It's a fabric pencil, a marking pencil. And once I've got that line marked, I'll just pin them so they don't move. And then what I will do is I will sew on each side of this line here going down the center, I'm gonna sew a seam at a quarter inch from the center line, and then on the other side, a quarter inch from the center line, another seam going straight across, just like that, right alongside that center line. So one on this side and one on this side, quarter inch apart. And I will repeat that with all of these other little squares. So now that I have all my little paired off squares sewn, I can now go ahead and trim down the center in that line that I marked. And because I made those two stitch lines, these two halves and these two halves are now sewn together. And then I can just pop it open and iron nice and flat. And then I can trim off these little corners that are going to be like little dog ears sticking out, so I'll just do that. And I'll just finish the rest of these, and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so there's those four blocks. There are, there are eight of them right now because they're, they're still separate. I haven't sewn them together. They're going to get sewn together. But right now I have four. And in the middle is going to be one big block, and then in each corner there's going to be some small ones. And I told you to remember the measurement of this one, which is a 4x4, four four, because these little blocks here that are going to go here are going to be 4x4s. Four so I need to now cut one, two, three, four blocks of my contrasting fabric. And these are the ones that I used for these blocks. And this is the one that I had used to do my little corner squares. I even marked it right here, my corner squares. And this is going to be for my center square. I'm not going to cut that yet, okay? So for now, I'm going to cut four of my corner fabric at four by four, okay? We're going to do that first, and then we're going to be putting some blocks together, and then we'll go from there, okay? Just didn't, I thought I lost that one. Okay, then we'll go from there. So for now, one, two, three, four at four by four, and I'm going to do this uh, for four blocks. So that means I need to cut 16. And then for the other combination, okay, so for the other combination, I had these fabrics here. These are the ones that I used for my, my halves ones, which are these. And then this is going to be my center square, and this is going to be my corner square. So I need to pull that one out, and I need to cut 16 of that one at four by four. All right, so to cut this again, we're going to square it off. So we're going to make sure that this is all aligned, and these, uh, fabric edge is all aligned as well and then I'm going to move it to a nice straight line right here so then I cut right here and trim off that fabric edge so now I have a nice straight cut and it's still aligned along here and I measured four inches cut again with my rotary cutter and then I measured another four inches and cut again with my rotary cutter. And that's all I need to cut for my uh, 16 squares because this is obviously, it had been folded in half. And then of course the fabric is already double here. So I got, I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces out of this strip and another eight of this, that'll be the 16. And of course I'll repeat that with this other fabric as well for the other uh, blocks that need the corners. Okay, so we can put this fabric away for now and let's go ahead and now cut these and I'm going to align them nice and straight along here. I'll do the same with this one in a minute. Just going to repeat and let's move this out of the way so I don't accidentally cut it. There we go. First we're going to 
brush rim off that little edge to make a nice square. And we go one, two, three, four inches. Okay, so I'll show you here. One, oops, <laughs> two, there we go, let's separate these two as well. Three, four, so there's four little squares there. I'm gonna get four out of this one as well, so I'm just gonna move it over so that it's closer to the camera here. One, two, three, four, right here is where I'm going to trim. Oops, let me, let me straighten this out. Make sure that is four inches, yes. Okay, here's the other four. Eight. Now I'll go ahead and cut it now from the other one, and then we'll proceed to the next step. All right, so now I've gone ahead and I've put my pattern back on here, and then the four corner uh, squares here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in rows. So what I want to do first is I want to sew these two together, quarter inch seam, these two together with a quarter inch seam, these two together with a quarter inch seam, and then these two together with a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to go ahead and pin these two with a pin right where I'm going to stitch it. So I don't forget, this is where I want to make that uh, seam. Okay, we're going to do these and then we're going to put those aside. So we want to do this whole row, okay? So of course, these two are going to get sewn together. And then I'm going to take this one and sew that here, quarter inch seam as well. And then I'm going to do this one, fold it, you know, right side, facing the right sides of this, quarter inch seam as well. So I have one long strip here. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to repeat for this row here. All of these are going to go together. All these are going to go together. These two are together. These two are together for now. Okay, so let's put all these together and then we can move on to the next thing. So first, let me put all my little, my little center ones here. Okay, so my light went out on my, on my sewing machine. So I hope that you can see this. come back okay so now that I've got the two pieces that I want to add these corner pieces to and then I've got the other two pieces that I'm not going to do anything with them yet I did already pop them open and iron them so there those are ready to go so now let's go with these and we want to take this again put this on its right side and then a quarter inch Okay, so there's those pieces all together. I'll do the other one and I'm going to iron this open and then we'll go to the next one. Alright, so I've already aligned all of these up here and now I need to cut the uh, square that's going to go on the inside. Now these are aligned right on the edge here because whatever's you know overlapping over that's actually going to get hidden into the seam when I sew this to this piece. It's going to get sewn right along here so that'll get stolen from that length so that's why I need to align them on the edges here to decide what I need to cut it. Okay so first I'm going to measure this length here. This is seven and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And then I need to measure in here. Let's make sure it's about the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the extra two quarters makes it a half. So yes, I am going to cut seven and a half by seven and a half for my center squares. Okay, so as usual, you're gonna as usual you're gonna square off your fabrics. I've already trimmed it, got a little ahead of myself, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna repeat it for this one as well. So square off your fabrics. So that's already been done. It's nice and aligned here, aligned with that line here, and I need to do seven and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
and a half. Okay, and I'm going to need four blocks, so that's one. These are folded in, it was double the fabric and then it was folded, so I've got one, two, three, four here. So that's enough of that one, and then I'll do the same with the other one, of course. Now let's go ahead and square off this other little edge here. This is the fold, here's this nice straight edge, we're going to use that to square it off and trim off any excess. I'm going to move it a little bit more. There we go. Take that off, and now we're going to go seven and a half this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half right here. So I've got these pretty, pretty squares. This one has a little bit of that raw edge or the, or the fabric edge here. That's okay, that'll get lost in the seam, so I want to make sure that I sew that into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is these two that don't have any corner squares sewn onto them, I'm going to go ahead and attach that. And um, this was on the outside, so I want to make sure those pinks here are going to be there. So that's going to get sewn, quarter inch seam, pinks. And then that'll get sewn again, quarter inch, qu quarter inch, and then it'll get popped open. And of course I'll iron them. All right, so now that I've got this long block here, I can put it down and I'll take these that have the corners on them. And then again, I want the pink against this. So I'm gonna make sure to turn that like that. I've already got the pink against this. So just flip it over. So, so quarter inch seams pop them open, iron them, and then we'll have a finished block and that'll get repeated with the rest of my fabric. And then I'll show you the finished blocks, but let's first iron this one or sew an iron. All right, so I have completed four squares in each of the fabric combinations. So all together, I have eight. Okay, so these are the completed. Look how pretty that looks. This one stands out really well. The peach one does not stand out as well as the other. You don't really see that little star design and I'm thinking that I probably should have used this fabric here for these little points that come out like on this one here so that they you know the little star points would stand out more because this this uh, looks too much like the green here too much white and it kind of hides it but uh, uh, they're already done so I'm just going to continue on with what I have. Okay so now I want to put these in a pattern and I want to try and use all of them. Now I thought about, okay, maybe just six, maybe just five, maybe just four. If I use four, you know, like that, it's, it's, it's a nice little quilt, but it's, it's too small. I want it to be a little bit bigger. If I use uh, six, uh, then I have three and three, but I only have two rows and that's not really square. It's kind of an odd, you know, shaped quilt. So I have to use all eight. So let me show you what I'm going to do. All right, so I have laid out the squares, and again, I only have eight, and I'm doing th three rows of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. That's only eight here, so that means I need one more block for that corner way over there. That's not a big deal. I can make one more block, and I can do it in this pink because I really like this one, and I want this one to stand up more, so I have the pink square in the center here. So I need one more. Okay, so this is a really nice size. I really like it. It's actually bigger than what I've done other little baby quilts, especially for newborns. I make them a little smaller, but I decided to go with a bigger block, so it's obviously coming out bigger. This is a, like a 40 by 40, but we're going to take away, you know, quarter inch here, quarter inch here for the seam allowance, quarter inch here, quarter inch there, and then of course, all around the edges it'll lose another quarter inch and so forth so you're talking about half an inch half an inch we're talking about an inch an inch and a half of loss all the way around so instead of like 40 it'll probably be I'm gonna say 38 or so around there okay so here's my predicament I have this piece of fabric uh, that I that I had purchased before and then I bought a white flannel each of these is only a yard of length which means it's only 36 inches 
Now I could still use it, but I'd have to steal away a lot from the edges of my blocks. And I don't want to do that. I only want to use lose, because I'm going to lose a quarter inch in the seams inside. I only want to lose a quarter inch also on the outside. You know, I don't want to have to lose more than that on the little edges. I don't want to lose almost this much and then the same over here, but over here only a quarter inch. It's just not going to look pretty. It's not going to look nice. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and head off to the store and just go buy about a yard and a half. Go buy another fabric because these are not going to work for this size, okay, that I want it to be. And then I decided to look through my stash and guess what I have? Okay, so I have this beautiful, well to me it's beautiful, <laughs> it's a pink fleece. Uh, it's not as soft as that white, but it's a little softer than the white flannel that I had originally uh, thought I would use. So it's really nice and I have a lot of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up cutting from here a piece that is not just the size of this but a little bit bigger because I also needed to fold over to make a little edging around the blanket. So I need to do like, mm, I think I'm going to add four inches here, four inches there, that way, that way. So we're talking about eight inches all together. Eight inches in the width, eight inches in the length of this fabric. And then I'm going to wash it because I've had this stored away. And it's got a little bit of some little things that got caught on here from having brought it into my craft room. But I'm going to wash it and put in some fabric softener just to soften it up a little bit. It's been stored away in a plastic uh, zip zippered bag. There's nothing wrong with it. These fabrics used to belong to my, I have a bunch of them. They used to belong to my grandma and she used to make uh, little patchwork uh, quilts, you know, little blankets. And she would just make little squares and, you know, patch them, you know, sew them all up. And she used to make blankets for everybody with that. And because this is her fabric, I think it would be really nice to use that for the baby's uh, little blanket. And I had used a blue one before, a fabric that I've been using a lot of for the boys, because we've had boys in our family. So I think it's time now to use that pink one for a little girl. All right, so that's gonna solve my whole solution, my whole my whole problem, that's a solution to my problem, is to use this pretty fabric. I don't have to go buy anything. The only thing I went, I went to go purchase is the yarn. I went and got some yarn, I was at Walmart, and it's like a little, kind of almost like a peachy color. It's pinky peachy. It says pale pink, but it almost looks peachy. And you know what? It coordinates just fine with all this, and this is just to tie it, because we're gonna make it a little tie, tie up quilt. And of course I'll show you what, how, how I'm doing that, you know, it's super easy. Let me make another one of these squares and then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one row first, so flip this one over, do a quarter inch seam, open, iron, take this other one, flip it over so the right sides are facing each other. You try to match up, you know, your little seams with, you know, the seam over here, the little blocks. And then do a quarter inch uh, seam there, pop it open iron it, repeat it for this row, and then repeat it for that row. Once I have all these, you know, completed rows, then I can take this row, flip it over facing that one, sew right here, quarter inch, open it up, iron it, and then bring that one over there, flip it over facing the middle again, do another seam to sew those two pieces together, flip it open, iron it. So there we go, everybody. I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so I have sewn all of my um, blocks together. I've also gone ahead and placed my little label. It says Custom Made with Love by Trisha Flores on it. So there it is. Looks really pretty, all sewn, and I've also ironed it. Okay, so now I'm going to take some batting and I'm going to cut it just a tiny bit bigger than this, and then I can go ahead and trim it to size once I have it all pinned down. Alright, so I'm just going to take some pins and pin all the way around. Once I have it pinned all the way around I can go ahead and start trimming the uh, batting and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go just a tiny bit bigger than uh, the blocked uh, fabrics here and I've gone ahead besides pinning on the edges here I've also pinned you know in some spots here on the edges and then in the center and I'm using these uh, quilters pins here these are flathead pins, but they have a, you know, like little colored uh, tips here. So 
some of them are like little butterflies but you want to use something with a, a big ball or something big like that where you can identify them you can see them on here don't use those small little uh pins little silver pins because they can get lost in there and uh at the end of the thing you may not have removed all of them and you don't want that poking the baby or any person that you might give it to. Uh, the other thing I will recommend or highly recommend is using safety pins to grab on to your uh, fabrics when you put them together. My grandmother used to do that because you will definitely see the safety pin, but if you happen to leave one in there, you didn't spot it for whatever reason, it's not going to poke anybody because it's closed and uh, hopefully uh, they will be spotted and removed. All right, so now I've got the uh, pink fabric, which uh, I've cut out considerably bigger than these other two pieces and it's already been washed. So this is the right side and that's going to be facing the table and then I'm going to sandwich the uh, batting with the uh, blocked fabric onto it. I need to take all these pins and I'm gonna push them again into there, but this time I wanna make sure I'm grabbing this fabric as well. So I'm gonna be grabbing three layers and then I'm gonna take uh, this yarn and I'm gonna go ahead and tie in different little spots so that all the fabrics are together. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've pinned all three fabrics. If I turn this around, you can see where, you know, this is kind of puckered in. That is where there's a pin holding uh, the three fabrics. And I've gone ahead and I've trimmed uh, some of the excess, but I've left quite a bit of fabric. I think I want to leave three inches and I'll trim that after I've done the little yarn ties. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, the fabric is pulled out as much as it can be. All right, so here's my next decision. Do I want to put the little ties on this side so, you know, the little yarns, I can tie them and have little tiny little strings on this side or do I want them uh, coming out from this other side? Uh, <clears throat> I made the decision that because this is the decorative side of the blanket, I want the little, the little yarn ends coming out this way, which means I'm gonna poke it down and then bring it back up and tie it on this side. Okay, I could do it on this side, but I feel like this is a really nice soft part of the fabric. So perhaps the baby will be touching this or this will be against the baby or, you know, if it gets put underneath the baby to be under or the baby like so. And then, you know, they may be the baby wrapped this way to show the pretty side. So I don't want little yarns in here. Um, you know, you just don't want some bits of anything um, possibly, you know poking you know, little knots poking against the baby's tender skin that's just my thought it's not that bad <laughs> the yarn's kind of soft but still it's just my thought that I, I don't want it on this side so um, I'm gonna have them coming out this this side I want to start at the center of my blanket this is my center block right here the middle right in the, right in the center you know as the center as best I can figure it I mean I can do some measuring and find the exact center but you know that's up to you okay so then I've taken this really big needle it's got a big hole in it so that I can put some yarn through it so I've I'm gonna put a considerable length I can always add more to it and I'll just trim it right there and what I'm going to do is just fold this up a little bit find my center right here poke it down and then go back up that same, but a little bit next to it. You don't want to come the same exact hole. And then push it back up this way. So just pull it through. And now that I've got that, I can move this pin out of the way. Let me pin it over here for now. Okay. And because the yarn is gonna thick, it's gonna be a little hard to pull through. So just gently do so. And ah, mine's getting all tangled. Okay, so when you pull it through, make sure that it doesn't go through any of these other little uh, little threads because you can end up pulling on them and get them all tangled. So I've gone ahead and I'm pulling it and then I'm just going to pull on one of the string ends. Make sure the other one stays in the blanket. So pull it like that and then I'll decide how long I want it to be. I realize you can't really see it because of the color of the yarn. Okay, so now I'm just going to tie, make a little knot and then what I'll do is I'll just trim the yarn to whatever length I feel like I want it to be and that's just it just knot it twice it's a tiny little knot but like I said it 
if you can feel it so that's why I wanted to put it on this side of the blanket that won't be against the baby okay and I feel like this is going to be more of a decorative blanket so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I have nine blocks and every one of them has this big uh, square in the middle so I'm just going to tie it at every one of the big square uh, on each of those blocks. So that's where I'm, I decided that I'm going to tie that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back once that is completed. Alright, so now that I've added all these little uh, stringed bits to my blanket, they're all tied uh, in these big squares. Some of them are centered, some of them are not, but that's okay. Um, so now I'm going to make sure that I keep these pins that are on the edges on there. I just want to make sure that I remove any pins that are in the rest of the blanket except the ones in the very edge. So now what I'm doing here is I am measuring. I, I've, I've gone ahead and I've cut a little bit ahead because I wanted to make sure that the amount that I have here is, is what I want. So I've gone ahead, measured three inches. So I'll just keep doing that, three inches, and then I'll just be cutting as I go along, measuring. I can uh, measure and pin if I want or use a little... Um, you know, the tailoring pencil that I used uh, when I was doing the blocks at the beginning. I can use that and mark a line if I want, uh, however you want to do it. But this is what I'm using. I'm using three inches. So I'm going to go ahead and trim three inches of slack of this other fabric, you know, on every side of the, uh, the quilt. All right, so I've trimmed around so I have three inches bigger on every side. And I've already gone ahead and got ahead of myself and I've already started folding it. So what I'm doing is I take the edge here all along and fold it in. And I just pick this one up a little bit just so I can see where I'm folding. And then I want to have this come over. And that's going to be about an inch that I've got coming over. So that's my measurement. You can choose whatever measurement you like. So once you have it where you want it, pin it. And then just go down um, every, you know, all, all the way down the edge and do that and pin it as you go up. And you want to put plenty of pins. So I'm working my way towards the corners. So you want to do that on every side and just leave the corners loose and then just come back and do your little corners. And you know, fold them up as neatly as, as you, you can possibly get them and pin them, like pin them really well so that um, nothing, you know, nothing moves while you're sewing. You know, you're moving it along the sewing machine. Sometimes the fabric pulls or, and you know, gets out of place. And as you're doing that, you're also going to be removing the pins from here so you can transfer them over to the edge. And of course, you're going to add more pins. So I just want to make sure that these are folded over. And then like that. And then I'm going to pin it here as close to the corner as I can. I feel like that this one's a little bit too too wide there make it smaller there that's about an inch there yeah it was a little too big okay and pin it and just get as close to the corner as you can but make sure your fabric's always together and then just bring this is the way that I do it I bring in my corners my edges here towards the corner push those down and then push this little corner this little tip I push it down like that so I create like like a little crown here and that's just the way that I do it I've done it different ways um, but I find that this is the easiest way for me. So just, you know, figure out what's easiest for you. And I want to pin this. And for some reason, I'm not getting it in there. There we go. I want to pin it down. Make sure nothing moves. I'm going to put a couple of pins there. So then I'm just going to sew along this edge here. And I'm going to sew as close as I can to this inner edge. Probably like about Mm, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. I want to make sure that I'm capturing this edge, you know, and sewing it onto everything. All the layers are, are being caught. I'm going to come all the way down. And then when I get to those little corners, I can go down this way, go back up, go around this way, that little peak right there, and then continue on. You know, of course, go down, come back, and then stop. What also I can do is I can come along this way, go around my little peak, just like that, and then continue on the edge. And then I can hand sew these little corners and make sure that they're, you know, they, these don't pop up, you know, don't, you know, you're not able to do this. Okay. So this is my next step is I'm going to start sewing on my sewing machine. If you want to do it by hand, of course you can do it by hand. Um, it might look really pretty if you use a yarn or an embroidery set, but I'm going to use my sewing machine.
right everyone so I've completed sewing all around the edges so my blanket is done I really love the way it has come out so I'm gonna give myself a big old thumbs up and I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up and I'm pretty sure my my new little granddaughter when she gets old enough to understand she might give me a big old thumbs up too so please leave a kind comment down below and let me know what you think of my project for this week I'm sorry that my video was a little late I had some life circumstances to take care of but I finally completed this project and I'm so very happy with it and I can't wait for my son and my daughter-in-law to see this and uh, let me know what they think of it. All right, everyone, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that red subscribe button below the video. There's also a little icon on the video that says subscribe. Please push that and then all notifications so that you get notified as soon as I upload a video. Thank you all so very much for watching uh, my channel. I really do appreciate your support. And I wish you a happy weekend and happy Labor Day. Thank you all so very much. And as always, enjoy.